Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Project Ozone 3, Kappa Mode. How are you guys doing today? How's life? Last episode when we made the Oblivion Death Bomb in order to make the Chaos Plank, it was suggested that maybe we should summon the boss. And I like the idea, so we're gonna summon the boss. The only question is where do we actually summon him because there is going to be a huge explosion and I don't want a big mess. And for those of you who don't know, the way that you summon the final boss in Abyssal Craft is that you have to make an Oblivion Death Bomb and you need to activate it with a lever. Although I'm not exactly sure if he's considered the final boss or not, but he's going to drop us this blade. That is the reward. We run. We shouldn't. Big explosion. Come on. No? Nothing happened. Okay. Hello. <laughs> that is a big hole. Um, he should be on a platform. Oh, it's there. Okay. Hello. Are you here? Oh, he's there. So this is going to be a very one-sided fight because I have the infinity armor. I have the sword of the cosmos. If I remove the infinity armor, he will one-shot me. And if I don't, he will never kill me. He's the harbinger of doom. He's taller than me. I don't like it. He's dead. And that was a quest. Huh. Did we get the sword? Oh yeah. Very good. That is a huge crater. <laughs> it's massive. Well, I'm not exactly sure what this sword does because it says souls harvested. Zero out of 1024. I remember there was an entry in our Necronomicon, but I think we need to upgrade it to the final version. So let's do that, because in any case there are a lot of quests in Abyssal Craft which we haven't completed yet. I was looking for my portal to Omotol, <laughs> it was right over here. When I was trying to make the materializer, I actually came here, but unfortunately you can see the result. It was during that period where every single mob could one-shot me. Anyhow, we need to gather the Omotol essence, so I did bring our Staff of Rending. We found the fortress, <laughs> okay. I'm looking for Abyssal Craft mobs, well this guy counts, yes. We got one. We need two more. We have two. I just realized that it's incredibly dark over here and I don't think you can see anything. And night vision really doesn't help. Okay, we have all three. Very good. We're going to require a few bits of flesh. We make the skin of the Omotol and we upgrade our Necronomicon. Well, generally you have to do this upgrade in order to find the fortress, but we already know where the fortress is. So we just go in. Hello, are you friendly? So the last time that we faced the boss in normal mode, the problem was that he was supposed to drop something and then he dropped it into the void. So this time, we have a magnet. Hello. No talking? Can I kill you? Yes. He's going to suck us in and then he's going to explode. Which is perfectly fine because we are not going to die. Just don't drop it into the void, please. Yes, he didn't. So this guy dropped the essence of the gatekeeper and if I'm not wrong, we can just upgrade our Necronomicon to the Abyssal Nomicon, uh -huh. which will tell us that there is a dark realm and if we go to the progression, yeah, it doesn't really tell you that much about the blade. But in any case, if you don't know, if you want to visit the dark realm, all you have to do is to jump into the void. And the only mobs that you should be able to find here are shadow creatures and mushrooms and Tinker Islands. <laughs> okay. Anyway, we don't have any business over here. We can go home. I came to the Abyssal Wastelands and I planted down some Shogot biomass in order to spawn some Shogots so that we will get the Statue of the Gods. Because that is a quest and we're missing two of them. So far, I haven't been very lucky and I only got one. So I guess we have to craft the other two? It shouldn't be that bad. In order to craft the Statues of the Gods, all we need is Omatol Essence, Dreadland Essence and Abyssal Wasteland Essence. So let me gather some, then I'll be right back. Dread guards are the best. <laughs> they don't die and you get so much essence from them. We only need to craft two statues, but I'm gathering a little bit more just in case. The only problem is that there are so many garbage mobs that you cannot find abyssal craft mobs. The ritual is going to require 20,000 PE and we have 22,000 almost. I have set in the pattern and all we need to do is to activate the ritual and give it a sacrifice. And it worked. Very good. Well, I just have to wait for 20,000 more PE and then we're done. All right, guys, it's been a while and I'm guessing we should have 20,000 PE. Very good. So we should be able to make the final statue of the god and then we should be done with Abyssal Craft for the moment. You go in the center, we activate you and bye bye. And we got it. And that was a quest. Very good. Oh, that actually unlocked more than one quest. We got the potential energy, for some reason, sacrificial altar, and the overworld altars. I think we had enough of abyssal craft for one day, so let us focus on something more fun, which is going to be the super reactor, and we're going to use it in order to fill in our draconic ball of energy. It does not require anything very complicated. Well, it does require a block of infinity, but uh, we have thousands of that, so it should not be a problem. And this guy is 0.1% full. <laughs> 
Okay, but since we're not consuming that much energy, I can just remove these guys. And also the solar panels, because I think the super reactor should be enough for the rest of the game. Okay, so this is the super reactor and you might notice that I had to move it by one block because the thing is, I got it wrong and I had to use the blueprint in order to make it. It's actually very complicated to make, there are so many blocks inside and all of them look the same. But in any case, the structure is now complete and we should start running it I guess. Getting all the items and fluids in order to run this guy indefinitely seems to be a challenge, although we have a creative tank so these guys will not be a problem, but we are going to require a lot of tacos and pink plastic. But I did notice something very interesting in the JEI, it says that it's going to generate us 9.22 quintillion RF per tick, and the maximum RF storage on our draconic energy core seems to also be 9.22 quintillion RF. So I'm extremely confused, do we have to run it for one tick? <laughs> I mean, do we need only one of the ingredients? And then we're done? Also, another very important point is that that guy can hold 9.22 quintillion RF, and then we have 8 of these ultimate energy output hatches, and each one of them can hold 9.22 quintillion RF. So the reactor itself is equivalent to 8 of these guys, because we have 8 output hatches. Why is there an invisible spider? Huh. <laughs> Anyhow, let's gather the material that we're going to need. We're going to need 5 quantum tanks, we're going to fill one of them with lava, and I just love that with one click you will get 2 million buckets of lava. Then we're going to need liquid corallium, we're also going to require liquid yellorium. How do we liquefy you? It seems that we're going to require a melter, which is going to require RF. Okay, here is the yellorium. We are also going to require nutrient distillation and I think we're processing it here. Yes. And the final item is deuterium from nuclear craft. So getting deuterium should not be that difficult. All we need is basically an infinite water source, an electrolyzer, and then we give you water and power. And since you are nuclear craft, of course you're incredibly slow. Yes, we get 50 millibuckets of deuterium. And that's what we need. 900 millibuckets and one bucket. So we void the hydrogen and oxygen, and then we should be able to get one bucket? Yes. And 2 million buckets of deuterium. So I guess this is the easy part, we just have to put the quantum tanks over here, and that's it. Yeah, it's getting full. But that is also going to require 2 million buckets. <laughs> okay. I mean, it does not require 2 million buckets, but it has a capacity for 2 million buckets. So basically, it means that uh, these quantum tanks will be empty. We take one stack of opinium core perfected, stellar alloy ingot, apparently rotten flesh. And since I thought we we're going to run this guy indefinitely, I actually made a lot of pink plastic, but we just take one stack. And then we just put them inside. And the final item that we're going to require is tacos. How do we make it? We need to buy corn and lettuce. Did I misplace it again? I'm so sorry. I'm not exactly sure if we need to run the reactor for a very long time or not, or we just have to run it for one tick, but we just make a few tacos and see. And if we're going to require more tacos, we just make a farm. We are also going to require cheese, and we can make two tacos. Alright guys, this is the moment of truth. How much power will we get? Nothing happened. Oh, something happened. Empty, 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 empty. Oh, so all of them are empty except this guy. And the numbers do not seem to match. Oh, this guy is full. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah, we're going to have a little bit of janky cabling because I really want to see. Did you fill it in completely? Uh, yes. Yes, it's full. And it only took two tacos. <laughs> okay. Uh, I guess we're done. This is awesome! We don't need to generate RF ever again! I still cannot believe what just happened, but apparently we did manage to fill in a draconic energy core in one tick. Which is ridiculous. I mean, why would you even include this in the game? What's the use of this thing? But in any case, before we continue with the rest of the episode, there are a few points that I would like to mention regarding your comments. On the previous episode, obviously, I was told that we can animate the creative energy cell from AE2 which we cannot. And just to confirm, you cannot animate any other creative item. Another very important comment that I got was that there is something called compressed tin, which I can use instead of tin dust, in order to make the neutral steel of the 7th degree. I checked and this seems to be the only compressed tin which is available to us, and it doesn't work. Also in the recipe, it does not show me any compressed tin. Am I being blind? Uh, is it in a different version? Because that could be extremely useful for me, because I don't like doing this all the time. So if you know that, please let me know, because I'll be extremely happy. Another comment that I got was that why didn't I upgrade these guys, which are making the neutral steel, into factories? And the reason for that is extremely simple. 
they never get full. Even though every second we are producing 75 neutral steel of the first degree, by the time we get to the sixth, this is the maximum speed. And you can imagine how terrible it is for the tenth. Something very interesting that I also discovered is that if you come to Omega, there was a huge list over here and it's now shrinking. There are 19 items over here. And if we make the sacrificial dagger, it is now 18. So does this mean that in order to unlock Omega, I just have to complete 18 quests? Because if that is so, let us do that. Out of those 18 quests that we have to complete in order to unlock Omega, this is the first 7 of them. For some reason, I cannot find my Rod of the Seas, so we're going to use buckets. 2 pink, 1 rune of mana, 1 lime, and 2 purple, and 1 seed. And we get Rosa Arcana. Then we're going to require the Orchid, which is going to require 2 gray, 2 yellow, 2 green, and 2 red, and 1 seed. For Jaded Amaranthus, we're going to require the Rune of Spring, Redstone Root, 1 Lime, 1 Green, and 1 Seed? No. Oh, 1 Purple, and 1 Seed. Yes. So for those of you who don't know, if you put a Rosa Arcana, not next to this guy, because he will eat it, <laughs> it will convert your experience into mana, which is really cool. A Jaded Amaranthus, if you put it next to a mana pool, should plant you mystical flowers. Somewhere. Yes. And we all know what the Orchid does. It will convert stone into ores. Oops, sorry, that was loud. <laughs> Maybe I should put it somewhere where it's more visible. Yeah, we're getting ores. But obviously they're not very useful for us, so they will go in our ME system. Another item that we need to craft is Insanium Crafting Seed. And there you go. And we're going to use that apparently in order to make the Awakened Draconium Seed. Which is actually more difficult than it looks because it is going to require HEB 248 Oxide Fuel. And that is going to require something which I hope we have. Berkelium. The question is, do we have enough? We're going to need 16 of you. And that should have been the difficult one because for the other one, we have 2100 of it. So we should be able to make 4 HEB 248 Fuel and then we infuse it with Oxygen. And that should be the one? Yeah, HEB 248, HEB 248. Cool. So they will go over here, crafting seed, creative essence. We don't have enough enhanced void ingots, so we need to make a block, animate it. And to be honest with you, we don't need any more. That's it. And they will go over here. I just noticed something very important. This is not creative essence. It is insanium and we have awakened draconium seed. We are also going to require a mob slaughter factory and a mob crusher. Yeah, the list is shrinking. <laughs> nice. Dimensional transceiver is also a quest that we have to do, which has EMC. There is a numismatic press augment for dynamos, which is also a quest, and it has EMC. Then we need the dragon egg seed, which is not that bad. And if I'm not wrong, dragon egg seeds. What is overpowered gardening? Here? Or is it here? The problem is that it will tell you the name of the quest and not the name of the item that you're going to need. And I guess this is the one, yes. Garden cloche, which is not that bad. I was going through the remaining items and it seems that we would not be able to finish everything today because the thing is we are going to require to make a fusion core which is going to require elite plating which is going to require crystal binder which is going to require calcium sulfate which is not the easiest thing to make because you're going to require sulfuric acid, fluoride water and you know it's a crazy rabbit hole so we might be able to do that next episode but in any case we have a garden cloche. Also, I made some of the turret bases. So the only items remaining in order to unlock Omega are these. And one of them is the sentient armor gem, which requires a diamond chestplate. I was going to say that it's going to be a crazy rabbit hole, but then I realized obsidian chestplate has EMC. So making this is also going to be relatively easy. We had only one lesser tartaric gem left and it has a little bit of demonic will, but it's okay. And the sentient armor gem. The only problem is we don't have the sentient armor, so this is basically useless. Another item on the list is the iridescent altar. We already have it, so we just need to break it and pick it up and put it back. Another item that we have to craft is the grand tartaric gem from blood magic and unfortunately it is going to require a demon will crystal which we don't have but i was going through the recipes and it seems that there is a cheaty way of getting it through a downstone anvil so i'm not exactly sure how it's going to work but let us make a tartaric gem yeah i was wondering why this recipe is not working this is palladium not iron yes now it worked i have absolutely no idea how this guy is going to work but um i don't know we put you on top nothing happens obviously don't you worry it seems that there is an automatic hammer and we have to power you and it doesn't work do you need embers so if we power you will you work no well it took me a while but it seems that it has to be damaged otherwise it will not work i hope one durability is enough okay it worked <laughs> nice 
Getting these is actually not that difficult because the only things that you're going to need is a demon crucible and a demon crystallizer, but I just wanted to know, can we get it like this? And we can. So we are going to require a minimum of 1000 will and it will drain 100. Okay, and we made this mob farm down here in order to gather demonic will. Now that we have 1000, we can make the greater tartaric gem. And unfortunately, as usual, we're going to need two of them. Because we need to fill one of them in with the demonic will so that we can upgrade the other one into a grand tartaric gem. It's going to require 4000. <laughs> this could take a while. I just realized that it's been a while that we are spawning these essence blocks and I don't think we're going to need more than 100,000 of each one. So let's switch them with obsidian, because we also need EMC. In any case, our greater tartaric gem is now full of demonic will and we should be able to craft the grand tartaric gem. But I was thinking, let's make a demon crucible. The way that a demon crucible works is that if you put it down and if you provide it with a tartaric gem, it will start releasing demonic will into one chunk. And if you want to gather that demonic will, you just have to put your tartaric gem in your hellfire forge. And now this is charging up. And if you put the crystallizer in the same chunk, you will get the demonic crystal. But we didn't do that and we cheat the system with the downstone anvil. And one grand tartaric gem. Perfect. So we can put this one here and charge it up. I just noticed that we're not crafting any more chaos catalyst because we're out of the nether rhyme crystal. Uh, we originally didn't have much, but um, I think it drops from a mob and that is called a white. So we put you down, we capture you and we spawn you. So do you drop it? Yes. Well, we did not need a crazy amount, we just needed 2000 in order to make the Chaos Catalyst. And I think we should have enough? Yeah, we have almost 2300 and that should be good. During the entire time that I was recording today's episode, I was duplicating Simple Machine Chassis and we have 20 million. I would assume that would be more than enough in order to supply every single person who's playing Project Ozone 3 with machine chassis. Anyhow, I was hoping that before finishing today's episode, we also make the mining multi-tool from the mining dimension. It might not look like much, but uh, look at the recipe. It's fun. The thing is, in order to make the mining multi-tool, we are going to require liquid sunshine as well as gasoline. I think we should start with the liquid sunshine. We're going to require water, then we're going to require a vat, and this guy can pull in water. Interesting. If we provide this guy with apple and sugar, it will give us hooch. And then we need to take that hooch into another vat, mix it with redstone and gunpowder, not redstone and gunpowder, redstone and blaze powder. Cause the other one made rocket fuel and we want fire water. Yeah, there you go, fire water. Then we are going to need another vat and mix the fire water with glowstone and sunflower so that we will get liquid sunshine. And for those of you who don't know, you can use the liquid sunshine in a weather obelisk so that the weather will be sunny. And we don't need a crazy amount, we just need two buckets. And that's it. Also during the last episode, I asked you guys where the hell do I find bioluminescence and someone actually replied to me and apparently we get it from the glowing box in Erebus. Well, we actually need a lot of bioluminescence because we also need to make the glowing gem. And we also need red gem. Are you red gem? Yes. You might notice that I'm actually not very good with Erebus. I hate bugs. I got bioluminescence from a plant. I think that one? Yeah. Well, uh, we got something. What is this? Elastic fiber. You know, it's been a while and I have not seen a glowing bug. Oh, these guys. Glowworm. I should have probably used looting. Yeah, that should be plenty. The final item that we're going to require in order to make the mining multi-tool is gasoline, And basically we have to start with pulped biomass which has EMC. Okay, and that should be more than enough I guess. It seems that it does not make any difference if we use a rich bio blend or a garbage biomass because all of them will make bio crude. The amounts are different but we have a creative tank so we don't really care. And if we put the bio crude in a fractionating still, we will get gasoline, And we just need two buckets and that's it. And if I'm not wrong, we should have everything. Yes. You go in there and we have it. That was incredibly fast. And since we do not need a mining dimension, that also goes into our ME system. And I'm guessing we don't need any of these, right? I hope so. We just trash them. We don't need them. To be honest with you, I'm not exactly sure. If we unlock Omega, does that mean that we can do the simple achievements? I really don't know. But we are not going to do all the quests in the simple achievements because some of them are kind of stupid. Anyway, that is something that we have to figure out next episode because I think it's a good time to wrap up this one. There's a mob. A few days ago, I asked you guys what mod pack should we play next after we are finished with Project Ozone, and based on your suggestions, I made a poll. And apparently, Seftek won the elections, as well as Rebirth of the Night. But some of you guys are not very happy with the results of the election, and I do understand your concerns. Because believe me, Seftek wasn't also my choice. I voted for Celestial Journey. 
because me likes magic. So I was thinking maybe we should come up with a compromise. Rebirth of the Night and Material Energy 5 are not something very complicated, so I guess we can do both of them whenever we are tired of technical mods. We're going to start with Seftech after we're done with Project Ozone, and since a lot of you guys want me to play with Greg Tech, maybe we will also do Omni Factory, because FTB Interaction and Greg Tech New Horizon are going to be super grindy and if we have them together with Seftech, I will never finish either one of them. So basically what that means is that we're going to have Seftech and Omni Factory as our main series and then we're also going to have two adventure based mod packs so that whenever we're tired from tech mods, we can switch to them. I have to manage through four different mod packs, I think that is a fair compromise. What do you think? Anyway, we were supposed to wrap up a few minutes ago, so thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one, bye bye.